The 2023 Women's World Cup has been absolutely fantastic, with twists, turns, and underdog stories in seemingly every group. So with that, let's review everything that happened in the World Cup group stages. And we start off in Group A, which consisted of 12th ranked Norway, 20th ranked Switzerland, co-hosts New Zealand, and World Cup debutantes the Philippines. Most people expected Norway and Switzerland to go through, but early on, it didn't look like that. Because despite a 2-0 win for the Swiss, it was New Zealand upsetting Norway in the World Cup's first match that sent shockwaves through the group. And with their next match being against the Philippines, New Zealand were in prime position to secure a place in the knockout rounds. But up stepped the Philippines and Serena Bolden, who powered home the header that led the Philippines to their first ever World Cup victory and arguably their greatest moment in the history of team sports in the country. The Philippines were among the best feel-good stories of this World Cup, and it was such a joy to watch them play. But in the other Group A match, a draw left Norway reeling, such that star player Caroline Graham Hansen said that she felt like she had been stepped on for a whole year after she was dropped for this match. In the final group match, every team still had a shot at the knockout rounds, and with Norway seemingly in turmoil, it felt like one of the Philippines or New Zealand had a real shot to make it through. But despite their best efforts, Switzerland and Norway did what they needed to advance, and New Zealand became the first host country in Women's World Cup history to be knocked out in the group stages. But now we move on to Group B, which had reigning Olympic champions Canada, co-hosts Australia, as well as the Republic of Ireland and Nigeria. The major news at the start of the World Cup was that world-class striker Sam Kerr was injured for Australia, which could leave them light up front. But the nerves were calmed via an opening day win for Australia via a penalty. And the opposite was the case for Canada, as Christine Sinclair missed her penalty, giving Nigeria a nil-nil draw against the reigning Olympic champions. Canada then defeated the Republic of Ireland, but Nigeria upset Australia, leading to a nervy final day in Group B, where a shocking 4-0 win for Australia meant that Australia won the group, Nigeria finished second, and Canada were surprisingly knocked out in the group stages. They would be one of many heavyweights to fall much earlier than expected. Now we move into Group C, where 6th ranked Spain started off the World Cup in disarray, as their complete and utter disrespect for host country New Zealand, whose people welcomed them in so kindly, forced Spanish captain Ivana Andres to apologize to the Maori people of New Zealand. The rest of the group contained 11th ranked Japan, 36th ranked Costa Rica, and 77th ranked Zambia, the lowest ranked team in the tournament. And things started off as expected, Japan and Spain both won their opening group games, but it was the second round of matches that provided the drama, as Zambia defeated Costa Rica to bring a victory for the lowest ranked nation in this year's World Cup. On the other side, Japan obliterated Spain by winning 4-0, despite only having 22% possession and only one-fourth of their opponent's total passes completed. That being said, the group did finish with Japan and Spain topping the group and moving on to the next round. Next up, we have Group D, with England, Denmark, China, and Haiti. This group it ultimately panned out as expected. England and Denmark went through to the next round, but the story here was the emergence of Lauren James on the world stage, who looks like she is in the running to be this World Cup's best player. With that, Group E is up next, where perennial juggernauts, the United States, champion of the last two World Cups, were expected to top this group easily. However, they would come up against the Netherlands in a rematch of the 2019 World Cup final, as well as Portugal and Vietnam. The group started normally enough. The US defeated Vietnam thanks to two goals from rising star Sophia Smith, while the Netherlands took care of what they needed to do against Portugal. 
But next up was that World Cup final rematch. At an exciting match, the Netherlands took an early 1-0 lead that left the U.S. reeling. But then Lindsay Horan got angry and powered a header home, so that the match ended in a 1-1 draw. Portugal also defeated Vietnam, meaning a showdown between the U.S. and Portugal would decide which of them advanced to the round of 16. And man, Portugal nearly knocked out the U.S. A flicked-on header allowed the Portuguese attacker to go through on goal with just the width of a post, preventing Portugal from upsetting the U.S. and heading through to the next round. The Netherlands' victory over Vietnam meant they topped the group, and the U.S. ended up finishing second, leading to questions surrounding this American side. Famed American player Carly Lloyd criticized the team's mentality, leading to controversy surrounding the U.S. side that forced their head coach to clap back and Captain Lindsey Horan to be forced to defend her team. At a time when this team probably wants to focus on the World Cup, these are the needless distractions that might lead to this U.S. side leaving the tournament earlier than expected. But that takes us into Group F containing France and Brazil, who were expected to easily take care of lowly-ranked Jamaica and Panama. The story of this group was supposed to be Brazilian legend Marta's final World Cup, and for someone who has done so much for the women's game, it felt like she deserves to go out on a high. A comfortable Brazil win started off her final World Cup well, although a Jamaican draw with France was a sign of things to come. And the next round of matches... France defeated Brazil, and Jamaica beat Panama, meaning Brazil needed to beat Jamaica to advance to the next round. But a nil-nil draw meant that Jamaica became one of the best underdog stories of this tournament, and Brazil and Marta were forced to bow out in the group stages. But Marta, to her credit, was completely class in defeat, and in an emotional farewell to international football, she saluted her teammates and expressed her hopes that the Brazilian public would continue to follow a Brazilian team that, despite going out, played some absolutely wonderful football. But perhaps the real story here was the rise of this Jamaican team, a team that has risen above the struggles for equality that they have been facing. In the 2019 World Cup, their players didn't receive any of their participation money, with the Jamaican Federation apparently losing the money. The Federation has continued to be a disgrace, with this Jamaican team resorting to crowdfunding just to be able to travel to this World Cup. I can only hope that the Jamaican Federation starts to take this team seriously and gives them the pay they deserve, because they have been a joy at this World Cup, and will look to continue advancing beyond these group stages. Moving on to our penultimate group, Group G. With 3rd ranked Sweden, 16th ranked Italy, 28th ranked Argentina, and 54th ranked South Africa. And the story of this group was South Africa, who scored a goal in the 92nd minute to defeat Italy, sending the team into euphoric celebration so that they would advance to the round of 16, along with group winner Sweden, who have a very intriguing matchup against the United States in the next round. And finally, we have Group H, consisting of two-time world champions and current European runners-up Germany, South Korea, Colombia, and Morocco. And the group started normally enough. Germany trounced Morocco 6-0 and Colombia defeated South Korea 2-0, in results that most people might have expected. But the group would really take off in the next round of matches, as young starlet Linda Caicedo danced between two German defenders, and she fired into the top corner, leading Colombia to an upset victory over Germany. And with Morocco's 1-0 win over South Korea, it all came down to the final day. And on the final day, a Morocco victory and a German draw meant that the unthinkable happened. Germany would be going home from the World Cup and Colombia and Morocco would move on to the round of 16. A group stage of upsets, finishing with perhaps the most surprising upset of them all. But I would be remiss not to speak about Linda Caicedo, who has been perhaps the brightest star in this World Cup so far, 
At just 15 years old, Linda Caicedo was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. But since then, she has recovered, and she's since been named the best player at the 2022 Copa America, and she has signed for Real Madrid. And at this World Cup, she has led Colombia to the knockout stages. And that has been the story of the 2023 Women's World Cup group stage so far. If you think I missed anything or would like to highlight some other stories of this year's World Cup, please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you for watching this video, and I will see you all for the knockout rounds. Bye!